started uh, practices yesterday as we begin conference play. Obviously, Stanford coming in to Autzen this weekend. Uh, a lot of carryover from what we see from our defense, you know, the same school uh, from a defensive schematic standpoint. And uh, certainly, they've, uh, they've done a great job over the years. So our guys are really fired up. And um, you know, preparations of are in full swing. Really good practice yesterday to get things going. I will uh, pull a sky and ask you a two-part question. Give it to me. Uh, what are the challenges of preparing for Bryce Love after the season he had last year? And also just the limited things I've seen from Stanford. It seems like one of their main red zone uh, plays is a jump ball to J.J. Arceda Whiteside. Mm -hmm. How do you defend that as well? Well, part of the, um, the challenge of defending a guy like Bryce Love is the quality of offensive line play that they have. They're very big and physical. Um, they they complement that with extraordinarily large and long tight end body types that are very physical as well. And they, they typically involve an extra offensive lineman, um, a defensive lineman, just a, another big fullback body type uh, to really get downhill in the run game. But what, uh, what can't be overlooked, what also makes it hard to defend him, is the fact that they've got great skill. They've got great skill, and if you try to bottle up the run game, uh, solely, you're, you're going to have uh, some issues outside, as you know. You saw some of their opponents early in the season so far have to deal with. So, I think uh, I think that's the part that makes them such a, a good football team and such a good offense is the combination of it's not just they're not just one dimensional. They can do it on both ends. Right here on the right, Ken. You sort of touched on this already, but uh, they've got a reputation for great line play as a mm -hmm. uh, former or maybe current. Uh, offensive line coach yourself. To the uh, day I die, O line baby. Sort of your feeling of, of where they are this year, and if, if their line uh, uh, stocks up to what it has been in the past. Oh, they're excellent. They're excellent. You know, there's a there was a lot of crossover recruiting some of those guys at the previous place I was at. So, uh, study them well. You know, Coach Shaw does a great job with uh, with calling the offense and implementing um, schematic. Uh, you know, um, that involve heavy physicality. You know, connotation to them. They they really stress it. They get downhill in it. They're, but they're athletic to get the ball outside as well. Some of their outside zone stuff. Some of their pin and pull stuff. Um, they they get to, uh, you know, they're they're pretty uh, diverse in what they do. They're not just running power o or or counter. They do some things that could really present some issues. And you've got to study them really well. You've got to do a great job playing your blocks as opposed to just looking for the ball. You got to have discipline up front because. They will try to expose the C-gaps, you know, if you're in certain fronts. Uh, they'll try to get two hats on one and try to knock back the line of scrimmage. So, uh, again, it's something. And our guys are used to a lot of those plays that we run as an offense as well. So I think there's a lot of carryover heading into, um, you know, our heavy practice days on Tuesday and Wednesday. And, and um, it kind of helps us a little bit because we could go more of the good on good stuff like we've been doing the past couple of weeks. How do you evaluate the running backs through three games? And is it still situational for the situational group? You know, first two games, they, we did a pretty decent job. Last game, we had four negative plays in the first half, which is not their fault. Um, certainly a, a combination issues with the center and guard, guard and tackle. Um, and then, you know, we, we felt they were going to put a safety in the box, which that's OK. That's part of football. Uh, I don't think you could ever make an excuse for that. You just got to knock them back better and farther when they put an extra guy in the box. Um, the fact that we don't run Justin changes their dynamic a little bit, but I think TBJ is a much better player, uh, and I think he's working hard at it. Uh, CJ shows that he's a physical guy and could get downhill, make people miss. Um, Cyrus has had his specialty work down close to the goal line. Um, it was good to see uh, Darian finally touch the ball the other day. I, I think you watch what TBJ does. He's very different than CJ, and, and you watch what uh, Travis Dye does. He kind of is a combination a little bit of both. So, you know, all those guys have uh, have shown that they could help us win. We're making this week very competitive. Uh, we know that Stanford, the way they play offense, they chew up a lot of clock. So the amount of possessions, amount of offensive plays you have during a game like this are, I wouldn't say they're limited, but they're probably reduced a little bit by the way they play football. They take the air out of the ball. So, um, you know, whoever has a hot hand in practice this week will certainly start us off in the game. Well, we'll start with TBJ, I should say, I should note. But after that, whoever has a hot hand will we'll get the nod. All the way in the back, Ron. 
Last season, obviously, you were in a different role, but against Stanford, you guys had a combined 33 passing yards. How huge is it to obviously have Justin in the lineup this time around? Well, I think we all know he's a difference maker. And certainly, it does help. We And, and again, I don't want to knock uh, our quarterback situation at the time. We did focus on running the football, and, um, and we did rack up a significant amount of yards. That was a game plan. We tried to eat up and chew up some clock, knowing that our passing game was out of sync. We weren't quite at the level that we were performing at early in the season. So, But, but to win games, you've got to have balance, especially when you get in a conference play. If you become one-dimensional and you're much easier to defend, it's tough sledding. So is it important? Yeah, it's critically important for us. And just as important as that is, is protection, right? Uh, just as important as that is making sure we secure the football. You know, you're looking at a team that prides itself in Stanford. I mean, about knocking the ball out and stripping the ball. And when you watch film, it really stands out. You know, it's, it's important that our scout team this week does a great job at every opportunity, yanking at the ball, raking at the ball, punching it out to really simulate what we're going to be playing against on Saturday. Coach, there's a number of players that left the game on Saturday. I'm wondering if there's an update on if there's anybody that probably won't be able to play this week or just kind of an injuries in general. Well, we, two we know for sure are going to be back are Dallas and Panay. Um, both those guys had ankle tweaks, but they practiced yesterday and they were full go yesterday. So we were glad to see that. Um, Adam Stack, I know he wasn't part of the guys that came off, but Adam did kick yesterday and he was 100% and did a great job. And, and credit to Zach for being there in the meantime while he wasn't, while he was nursing his injury. Uh, Brendan Schooler will get an evaluation today, find out where he's at, expect uh, Matrell McGraw back uh, as well. You know, he had, uh, you know, a lower, lower leg injury, but he seems to be fine. Um, trying to remember who else. If you could remind me, I'd be glad to give you a report on it. He did. He came out for a second. Um, he, got, he got more... Uh, you know, he took more of a shot, not a headshot or anything of that nature, but just got bruised up, banged up pretty good, and he shook it off and went off, continued to play football, and he practiced yesterday full go as well. So we don't have any, uh, we don't foresee any issues with him at all. On the right, Jerry. Yeah, Coach, uh, Todd Griffin and uh, said his biggest highlight was beating Stanford three years ago down there on the farm when he's a freshman. Ugo also played in that win. So uh, even though there's been a big change in personnel, but McCaffrey was there at that time, the Ducks still beat him. Mm -hmm. Have you been able to maybe even look at any of that and learn anything, or is it just not relevant now? But I mean, except for Todd and Ugo having come home with victories down there. Sure, no, it's completely relevant. I mean, the, that scheme uh, defensively it hasn't changed for a long time. Offensively either. I mean, they've run what they've run. They take great pride in it, and they should. They've had tremendous success with it. So. No, we go way back when watching film, way, way back. And not only our games against against Stanford, but also the games they've played throughout the course of the last four and five years. Um, you always look at scheme overlap wherever you could find it. You always look and see if there's an idea out there that might benefit, you know, your team as well. So, no, the film study that goes into it is relentless. And I think, you know, as a coach, you have to be open-minded without trying to reinvent the wheel either, right? I, I think you can get caught up in trying to do too much and get out of sorts and out of uh, – you know, a little bit out of whack if you take too much of an approach of getting away from what you're doing. But I think you always have to look and see how how they are schemed up by other teams that have played them year after year after year. And uh, and we're doing that. Mario, how do you approach the extra attention that's going to be on this game with college game day in town? Do you want guys to embrace that? Do you want them to tune it out? Do you view this week as a showcase for your program at all? Well, I think you acknowledge it as one of the reasons you come to Oregon right to be on the biggest stage in the national spotlight recognize the ultimate honor um but at the same time always know that it's still about playing the game right all the outside elements don't have anything to do with the result of the game or the results of our process so it's very welcome it's exciting i, I know that our community our uh, otson is unmatched as it is well now throwing the extra ingredient of game day and ABC and everything that goes with it. And, and we expect and we want and need uh, Otson to be Otson at its finest. And we expect that to happen. It's going to happen. So um, I think I think it's all positives. I think it's all positive. And the way we run our processes, Thursday, Friday, by the time the noise really builds up, uh, we're kind of locked away. You know, we're <laughs> we close up shop for the outside and uh, the outside world to make sure that our guys are honed in and, and ready to take care of business. How about that? Eh? 
<laughs> how off, how prepared do you think Tyler is if called upon to, to run the, the offense in a game setting like this? Yeah, well, he's, he has not achieved the level that Justin has. That's, you know, the honest answer. I know a lot of times when you ask questions like that and people want to give you the runaround and whatnot, man, he is a, he is a great football player. And um, he takes a ton of pride in what he does. He's more than ready to run our offense. To what to the level of Justin, I don't I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. To a winning level, I would confidently say that. All right, Gary. Yeah, it's kind of a cliche that fans or maybe broadcasters say that maybe you guys held some things back that you weren't gonna show on Saturday for the upcoming big game. Is that and maybe Stanford didn't either in their last game. Do you think that's true or do you think is that just kind of a... I just think it's a different game plan. You know, it's a different game plan. You deal with different things. You try different things. I would never call it holding back. I think that would be offensive to your opponent, you know, if you were trying to hold back. I, I've i been on in programs and teams that try to hold back and found themselves on the losing end of the hold back, and that didn't feel too good after. So we don't approach it that way. Uh, certainly, are there different things and different things we do from team uh, on opponent-by-opponent opponent basis? Absolutely. Stanford's been one of the best teams at keeping opponents out of the end zone. What, what are they doing that, that has been so challenging for, for teams to score? Yeah, they've only allowed, well, are they, on paper, they've allowed two touchdowns. One of them came on the last play of the game last week, so they've really allowed one uh, in game one, and, and they did a great job against USC. It starts with their defensive front. Uh, they are, you know, they play what they play, and they are a, a scheme sound, but they are also very disruptive. Uh, I think that when they, they bring in their two outside linebackers and use them as edge rushers, they create a lot of problems. They understand protections very well. And what I mean by that is they'll attack the zone and the short side of the protection in a manner where the backside can't help it. And that's where you see the sack fumble against USC. You see where it's you know a TE, but with a linebacker eating up the center where he can't get back to help, where the backside guard is gobbled up by the three technique and he can't slide back inside to help. That's created a lot of big plays for them because uh, you, you watch the USC game this year, they're trying to score right right before halftime. Big play, big play. Sack, fumble, goes the other way. All of a sudden, it's 14 um, nothing. So I think it starts with that. Their linebackers are, are extraordinary players. Um, those guys, the, both the outside guys, which we mentioned already, but the inside guys, they do a great job using their hands, getting off blockers, um, shedding blockers, and getting ball carriers down, as in contact and down. You don't see them take on a hit and get dragged for another couple of yards. They do a really good job of, of tackling, form tackling, getting on those legs, wrapping guys up, and taking them to the ground. And their secondary is big. They've got some big guys that keep everything in front of them. Um, you don't see explosive plays against them. Uh, some, you know, some teams have had success moving the ball. But they really tighten down down there in the red zone, and uh, they're fast and they're big, so they're not gonna they're not gonna allow themselves to get duped because they're very disciplined. So you see uh, the reverses, the double passes, like UC Davis threw last week. You don't you don't see them bite on that stuff. You see a disciplined football team that trusts their scheme, and they do a heck of a job. Justin's had four four straight games with a sack. Uh, I think Jelks is just behind him. Can you maybe speak just about their play the last three weeks and their importance of contain against Stanford and preventing Bryce Love from bouncing outside? Yeah, they'll play a huge role. The, the entire defensive front will. You know, Justin and Jalen, what they do extremely well is they use their length. You know, they could get their arms or hands on guys and maintain separation. They could find the ball, the ball carrier, uh, get rid of blockers. You know, they strike blockers extremely well also. They've got a lot of slither to them. They could close on the quarterback. They could close on ball carriers. Um, they are they are talented guys that are playing with a chip on their shoulder, real high motor guys. And I think when you got have when you have a guy like Jordan in the middle, uh, who is unheralded, right? Because the stat line is not going to light his name up every Saturday. But what you see is a guy that that has done a great job controlling the center and the a gaps, forcing things to bounce. Um, so it complements, they complement each other really well. And of course, they, you know, Troy helps that out. The whole defense, you know, does that. And, you know, we've done a really, really good job against the run. Um, and all those guys have worked together, you know, along with our coaches to make that a reality. Historically, Stanford's been a tough matchup for Oregon just because of the way they play is different from a lot of other teams in the Pac-12. Mm -hmm. When you think about the mentality that you want to play with, do you feel like this is the kind of game where that should show up against a really a big physical team like Stanford? It has to. It has to. They uh, they take a lot of pride in that, and I think that's 
that's the way football should be approached. It should be. And it's been no secret that since since day one, all the way back in January, from the offseason program to our approach to practice, heck, everything we do from a mentality standpoint, it's preaching and doing it and working, physicality, toughness, effort, playing smart football, and uh, and making sure you control the line of scrimmage. So, no, you know, a team like this is, is you need to meet a team like this head on. And you've got to play your best football. You've got to play with great technique, and you've got to play with toughness. Uh, because, again, you're, there's not probably not going to be a million snaps this game, right? So every single snap has that much more value, and um, our, our guys are really looking forward to it. Um, philosophically, uh, is this just a net opponent, or or do you sort of em embrace the fact game day is going to be here and Stanford's unbeaten and top 10 team and, and treat this as something extra special? Well, I don't think you shy away from the fact that there's a lot of attention right to the game I don't think you ever hide the fact that you know game day is going to be that's a great honor I think we all know that we all want that right we'd like for game day to be here every single week right to light up odds in the way it it uh it does but it's it just never has been never will be part of our football processes our preparation our guys are well aware of that I, I don't think games like this motivation has taken care of itself and our motivation has always come through preparation. Well, all the factors that you just mentioned, you know, we, we, we block out outside factors, but stuff like that, of course, of course, that thing is something that you think about and, and you know is, is real. And it's, it's why you come to Oregon, right? It's why you come to Oregon to have an opportunity like this. And, you know, we told the players yesterday, look, we've created this opportunity for ourselves, all right, by, by playing good football, um, by being in the situation that we are because again they're they're three and zero heading in a they've already played a conference game we're three and zero going into our first conference game and all of a sudden we've attracted this attention we've earned it it's embraced but we just don't make it part of like our football technical fundamental and schematic process thanks coach okay thank you guys have a good one